a very good morning so this is the fifth module of our microprocessor paper so in the microprocessor the fifth module is completely dealing with how the input output interface units are connected to the processor and if i want to have an interface what are the different microprocessor controllers available for these interfaces so we will be talking about the data transfer scheme i told you now if you have input output device you need to transfer data to the processor you need to transfer the data to the processor so whenever i want to transfer data from the input output device to the processor obviously you need one kind of controller to transfer data from the processor to the input output device so you may be having a keyboard you may be having a printer you may be having a monitor you may have a mouse or you may be having a memory also and when you want to transfer the data to and from these input output devices and the processor you need some kind of interface devices so these interface devices are called as controllers i am not going to call them as microprocessor i am going to call them as microcontrollers so we are going to see what are the different transfer schemes available for each transfer scheme what are the different controllers that can be connected to the microprocessor that is what we are going to learn in the fifth module so this is just a slide i just want to share you with you girls so please go through this slide okay so the best way to predict your future is you have to create it you can't simply predict what will happen but instead try to create it on your own okay so we are going to talk about all the interfaces that are available in a computer whenever i say interfaces it is about the input output so your input output interface will provide a method for transferring information that is why we call it as a data transfer scheme so whenever you want to transfer information between internal storage and the external devices you might have studied in your uh, basics that computer will be transferring the data from input output device to the Uh, processor but it cannot directly transfer the data to the processor instead it will transfer the data to the memory only then the data will be taken by the processor so in whenever i say input output interface the major role of input output interface is it wants to transfer the information or data from the internal storage and the ex to the external storage and vice versa also so all the peripherals that are connected to a computer needs a special communication link for interfacing them with the processor now the purpose of communication link why i need a communication link for interfacing them with the cpu is to resolve the differences between the central computer and the peripheral devices so we can why don't we directly connect uh, peripheral device to the central processing unit i have 8085 microprocessor why don't i directly connect my input device to the processor why i am not able to connect an input device directly to the microprocessor the reason is there are lots of differences between the central computer when i say central computer it is the processor microprocessor like 8085 or 8486 or like your intel i3 processor that is what you call as the central computer so you have lots of differences between the central computer and the peripheral devices let us see what are the differences now the first point that you have to understand from this slide is the input output interfaces used to transfer the data 
from the internal storage to the external storage and vice versa. This is point number one. Now the question is, if I want to transfer the data, why don't I directly have a connection from the peripheral device to the processor? I can't have this kind of communication link because of some differences between the computer. Computer is nothing but your microprocessor and the peripheral devices. Now what are the major differences? The first major difference is all the peripheral devices are electromagnetic or electromechanical devices. Most of your peripheral devices say if you take a um, keyboard, if you take a printer, if you take a magnetic tape, if you take a monitor, all these the peripheral devices are mechanical or a magnetic devices. Whereas your CPU, CPU is nothing but your 8085 or 80486 processor and the memory, they are the electronic device. So obviously, you need to have the conversion of signal values in whenever you want these devices to communicate and not only that the operation mode is also different. So your keyboard will be having a different operating mode, monitor will be having a different operating mode, memory, your primary memory will be having a different operating mode and your processor is also going to have a different operating mode. So this is one of the very important difference because of this I need to have an interface between the CPU and the peripheral device. Now the second major difference is the data transfer rate. All the peripheral devices will be transferring the data in a very very slow pace comparing to the central processing unit which is your processor. So processor is working in nanoseconds and microseconds etc. Whereas the data transfer rate will be in seconds sometimes. So your peripheral devices say imagine when you are going to press a key on the keyboard it takes some time right. Whereas just when, I, when you uh, just in one key press the processor will be executing thousands and thousands of instructions per second. So imagine the difference between the processor speed and the keyboard speed, processor speed and the monitor speed, processor speed and the uh, what do you call your uh, memory speed. So the difference between the data transfer rate is another very important reason why I need an input output interface, right? So obviously since they are having different transfer rate, you need to have a synchronization mechanism between the processor and the peripheral device. So who will be now doing the synchronization mechanism? Obviously the input output interface, right? So now you can understand what is the role of input output interface. One role is because of these difference it needs to convert the signals right if you have an analog device and the um, or magnetic device the magnetic signal must be converted into electronic signal if you have a mechanical device the mechanical signals must be converted into electronic signal so that is also done by your input output interface then the data transfer rate is completely different so this data transfer rate is managed by the synchronization mechanism. Who will be doing it? Again, it will be done by the input output interface. And the third major difference is the code format. The data codes and the format in the peripheral device is completely different from the word format that you are going to use in the processor and the memory. So your a processor will be using a very different format, right? Sometimes it may be using a 32-bit uh, format or it may be using a 64-bit format. Whereas your keyboard will be using only a 8-bit format. For each key press, it may be using only a 8-bit format. And the key press is going to be an analog signal. So obviously this signal has to be converted and it must be put it in a particular format. Only then it can be sent to the processor. So the data code and the data format between the peripheral and the processor memory will be completely different. So this is the third reason why I need the interface. So obviously what happens? 
whatever data code format is used in a peripheral device that will be converted into the appropriate format which is required by the central processing unit. So who will be doing this conversion? Again it will be done by the input output interface. And then you have the fourth difference which will be your operating mode. So operating mode of a peripheral device is completely different from each other. Therefore you need each of the device to be controlled and not to disturb the operation of other peripherals. Say for example when you have a printer the operating mode of the printer uh, let me put it this way operating mode uh, say the um, to, uh, the what do you call the drum in the printer must be rotating so that it will be form feeding the papers so the operating mode of a printer is completely different when you take a keyboard the operating mode of the keyboard is you have to type each and every character in the keyboard or if you take a monitor the display is having a completely a different operating mode now there is only one processor the processor must take care of the operating mode of a monitor accordingly it has to give some signals or what you call instructions the same way printer is completely a different device accordingly the processor must give some kind of instructions keyboard is completely a different device accordingly the cpu will be receiving instructions or the data from the keyboard so all the peripheral devices each of them are having their own operating mode accordingly the cpu has to talk to these peripheral devices in a different mode so these are the four major reasons why i need a communication link what kind of communication link you want you need an input output interface now now the question is how do we resolve these differences obviously the computer system will include a special hardware component between the cpu and peripheral why it is including a special hardware component between cpu and peripheral one to supervise i said it has to manage all these devices another one it has to synchronize all these input output data transfer so these components are the one which you call as the interface unit and this is the one which will interface between the processor bus and the peripheral device so this is what you have to understand so these slides explains you why i have to learn different controllers or different microcontrollers which play the role of input output interface so whenever you have a microprocessor some, something like your 8085 and 8086 if this processor wants to communicate with any kind of peripheral devices it needs an interface between them why it needs interface because it has four different differences and for these differences i need a special hardware component to be kept between the cpu and the peripheral for supervising and synchronizing the data transfer so this special component is the one which you call as the interface unit right so this is one diagrammatic representation of why we need a communication link so you need a processor and the processor will be communicating to the keyboard or the display or it may be communicating to a printer or it may be communicating to a magnetic disk so imagine all these three are completely different peripheral devices the operating modes are completely different the data formats are completely different and the internal functioning of each and every peripheral device is also different so one processor needs to communicate with all these devices processor is completely a different device and these devices are different and they are of i mean they are in their own controlling uh, operating mode so if this is the case what i need i am going to place an interface between the device and the processor and these interfaces will be connected to the processor using these kind of control 
lines or you call it as the bus data bus address bus and control bus so these are the lines which will be connected to the interface and this interface will be communicating to the devices now when i say these interfaces these are the interfaces which we are going to discuss in this chapter so in the chapter we will be talking about how these interfaces are designed in such a way that they are communicating between the keyboard and the processor or they are communicating between the printer and the processor so these interfaces are nothing but the microcontrollers which we are going to discuss in this module okay so now the previous slide showed you what is the importance of having the interface now this slide shows you what is the function being done by these interface units what exactly is done by this interface units so the interface is used for the following functions first one the interface unit will be decoding the address and the control received from the input output bus so obviously when it is receiving the signals from the keyboard printer magnetic disk or from the processor the interface must decode it why it is decoding it has to understand what is the instruction given by the processor it has to understand to which particular device the instruction is coming in so for which it is going to use the decoding process so once it has decoded it is going to interpret them for the peripheral what do you mean by interpreting when it is sending a signal it will be decoded suppose say for example you want to do uh, you want to display something on the monitor so the processor will be sending a display instruction to the monitor this instruction will be received by the interface and the interface will be decoding it so when it is decoding it understands one instruction has come in which you call as the control and to which particular device the instruction has come in so it will understand one control instruction and one address for the device so once it has understood the control and the address it will be directing it to a particular interface now what the interface will do it will be interpreting it how it will be interpreting it will understand okay it is going to be the display instruction and the display instruction has come to the monitor that is what you mean by interpreting then once it has interpreted it is going to provide the signal for the peripheral controller that will be done so it is going to say that it is a display instruction and the display instruction wants to display the character a on the monitor that will be given to the peripheral controller by the interface and then it will be synchronizing the data flow and it will supervise the transfer between the peripheral and the processor so the four major functions done by the interface unit it will be decoding then it will be interpreting the signals once the signals are interpreted it will be sending the signals to the controller then once the signals are received it will also synchronize whether the data flow is proper between the peripheral and the processor so decoding interpreting issuing the signal and synchronizing are the four functions done by any of the interface unit in the computer system so each peripheral will have its own controller that will be operating the electromechanical device for example a printer controller controls the paper motion the paper print timing and the selection of printing characters all these things that will be done by the controller which you call as the interface of the printer the interface of the printer so this interface will be decoding interpreting providing the signal and it will be having the synchronization process in the same way this interface will also have the four functions decoding interpreting issuing the signal and synchronizing okay now any microcontroller which acts as the interface unit will be housed separately or it may be physically integrated with the peripheral what do you mean by this 
see i am going to have a controller for the printer i am going to have a controller for the magnetic disk i have a controller for the keyboard and display terminal now what it says these controllers can be kept separately like this or it can be integrated with the peripheral device itself so that means the interface can be part of the peripheral device or it can be kept separately in the computer system right so each design will uh, each computer organization or each computer system architecture will have its own design so some architecture will be having the interface embedded in the peripheral device itself whereas some architecture will have the interface in the processor in the not, not in the processor as a separate component for the processor so you can have the controller in separately or you can have it integrated with the peripheral device so the address and the control signal address and the control signal will be going into the interface the address and the control signals will be going into the interface what the interface will do the interface will decode it and interpret it so that is what is done here the interface will be decoding and it will be interpreting it so once the interpretation is over it will provide the signal to the peripheral controller and then it will wait for the operation to be completed and during the time it will be managing the data transfer also so that is what you call as synchronization right so this is the uh, process or the functions done by the interface unit now whenever we are going to have these kind of decoding interpreting signals etc it it will be given to the controller as a code as an instruction code or as a um, what do you call it a, um, word in the uh, word format and it will be placed in the control bus now whenever i say function code see, here i told you it is going to decode the address and the control right so the interface will be decoding the address and the control now whenever i am going to have this control the control will be the particular instruction what kind of instruction say you want to read your data or you want to write your data that is what you mean by the control or you call it as the function code now whenever you have this control the control will be placed in the control bus right because address is the one which is used for identifying to which particular device it wants to communicate whereas control is the line bus line which is used to receive the instruction from the processor the instruction may be a read instruction or it may be a write instruction or it may be a processing instruction so what kind of instruction is received for the processing will be specified in the function code and this function code will be placed on the control bus and the interface will be responding to the function code and it will proceeds to execute it so what are the four different types of instructions that you will get as a function code it may be a control command it may be a status command or it may be an input command or the output command so when i say control command the control command is issued to activate the peripheral and to inform it what to do Now what do you mean by this the control command will be suppose say for example uh, when you give a command to the printer it may be used for uh, uh, printing so uh, when uh, when you give the control command the control command for a printer may be printing or the control command may be uh, to instruct the printer to uh, roll the papers or you may want to form feed the paper or you may want to leave a particular page then you want to print the data in the next page this is what you call as a control command whether you want to print it whether you want to move the or um, uh, move the what do you call the uh, toner or you want to run the uh, sorry uh, what do you call it as uh, roll the drum in the printer so this is what you call as the control command so activating the uh, 
peripheral to activate the peripheral you are going to issue a command which you call as the control command or you want to know the status of that particular device whether the device is busy or not whether the device is idle or not whether the device is now ready to receive the signal or not that kind of status command will also be issued on the control bus so it is used to test different status conditions in the interface and the peripheral suppose say for example if it is going to be a magnetic disk you may get confused like why do i want to know the status see uh, when i have a printer printer is a dedicated device you call it as a dedicated device why we call it as a dedicated device if a processor is issuing a command to the printer the printer will be dedicated to that particular process whereas if you take magnetic disk magnetic disk is a shared device why more than one application can communicate to the magnetic disk so by the time if more than one applications or more than one devices wants to take the data you may get confused now how more than one devices are going to interact with the magnetic disk say for example you are writing something onto the magnetic disk or you may be reading something from the magnetic disk so the processor wants to write the data and the processor wants to read the data this will be done by two different applications application 1 may be reading the data from the magnetic disk application 2 may be writing something into the magnetic disk so two applications are sharing one device which you call as the shared device whereas if you take a printer printer will be always see ningala printer la vandu print aimba what happens it will come into the queue le first come first serve basis la and it is going to work in the printer so if one application is giving a print instruction another application has to wait until the previous print instruction has been completed so printer becomes a shared device so you may sorry um, dedicated device so you may be having shared or dedicated device by the time you want to understand what is the status of that particular device which will be uh, known by using a status command then obviously you will have a input command and output command data input command and data output command so it will be causing the interface to respond by transferring the data from or to the bus into or from one of its registers so it is simply transferring the data so if i have a keyboard you will have a data input command so you will get the data from the keyboard to the processor uh, if it is going to be a monitor you will have a data output command then you will take the data from the processor to the monitor so these are the four types of function code which can be placed on the control bus so the processor can place these four different function commands on this control bus so what the processor will do suppose if the processor wants to read some data from the keyboard it will give the address of the keyboard here in the address bus it will specify it is going to be a input command on the keyboard sorry on the control bus then the interface this interface will be receiving the control instruction as well as the address this will be decoding the instruction it will and inter interpret the instruction then it will be operating the keyboard and the keyboard will be receiving sorry uh, will be sending the data to the interface and this interface will be placing the data to the data bus and the data will be reaching to the processor so this is how it is going to work in the function commands okay now apart from all these input output devices you will have memory bus also in the input output um, interface unit uh, now when i say memory bus apart from the processor here in the diagram the processor is communicating with the keyboard printer and magnetic disk 
so apart from these peripheral devices the processor will be communicating to the memory also you will have a memory here the processor needs to communicate with the memory also now memory is a separate device and these peripheral devices are separate and they have very different operating mode the processor is having a very different operating mode now the question is whether the processor is going to use the same data address and control bus to the memory as well as to the processor that is the next question whether the processor can communicate with these input output devices and the memory using the same bus or is it necessary that you have a separate bus so that is what we are going to discuss next which you call as input output versus memory bus so in addition to communicating with the input output the processor must communicate with the memory unit also so like the input output bus the memory bus also contains the data address and the read write signals now the question is how we are going to design the communication of the processor with the memory as well as the input output now if the processor wants to communicate with the memory and the input output there are three different ways that it can do one it can have two separate buses when i say two separate buses one bus for the memory another set of buses for the input output what do you mean by this separate address control and data bus for the input output device and separate address data and control bus for the memory whereas the second way specify that you are going to have one common bus for both memory and input output but separate control lines for each what do you mean by this see in the diagram i have a data line address line and control line if it is going to be the first method in the first method what you are going to do the processor will be having these three lines for the input output interface then it is going to have separate three lines separate three lines and that will be connected to the memory that is the first method what is the second method i am going to have the data and the address line data and address lines are common whereas control lines will be separate for the input output and the memory so only the control line will be separate so you have data address these two lines will be shared by the memory this side and the input output devices but it will have a separate control line for all these input devices in the same way separate control line for the memory also and the third method is we can have common bus for memory input output with common control lines it is both memory and input output interfaces will be sharing what the data bus control bus as well as the address bus everything will be shared here so that is the third way so first way all the three set of buses will be separate for input output and memory the second way you can have common bus data and address bus will be common whereas separate control bus for the input output and the memory and in the third way we are going to have completely a diff, uh, sorry a common bus the data control and address lines will be shared by both the memory and the input output interface okay so let me stop here all the three methods we will be discussing tomorrow so this is what you call a separate bus for memory and the cpu will be having a separate bus input output devices and the cpu will be having a separate bus whereas in the second case i have a common bus cpu will be having common data and address bus for the memory and input output devices but separate control lines will be there whereas in the third it is going to have in the memory map it is going to have 
common bus between the memory and the input output. So we will be discussing all these three data transfer schemes that use the three ways of computer buses communicating with memory and input output in the next class.